What's up traders, Anthony Cardelli here and welcome to this week's episode of Develop Your Edge. In today's show, I'll be chatting with Morad Askar, otherwise known as Futures Trader 71, about his edge day trading futures. But before we get Morad on the line, let me take you to this week's Ninja Charting Edge. So, a couple of weeks ago, I opened up my DMs on Twitter, loving the questions and the comments I'm gonna get. Keep them coming, everybody, my DMs are open. Tons of questions about silver, of course, because that's a really a hot topic right now. So I chose silver as the market of choice here on Ninja. I used a 60 minute chart with Bollinger Bands, 20 period free standard deviation, and Fibonacci retracement tool with 70, 50, and 30%. So what's the charting edge this week? Well, Something that I like to do is let the market get me out of a trade, of a market that's exploding, like uh, silver was exploding to the upside, right? How do you know when to cover? I don't like to have targets when I have something that's running. I like to have the market get me out. So I'm gonna use these two indicators to show you what I would use in a scenario for a trend that was running like silver to get me out. So we talked about Bollinger Bands. When markets are going up, in this particular case, you see the market going up and the top Bollinger Band going up and the bottom Bollinger Band going down. When the market starts to slow down and the Bollinger Bands start to come back in, they revert back in, that's signal number one. Then I take my Fibonacci retracement tool from the bottom peak to the top peak. Now I have my 70% line. So silver was going up, now I'm watching it as those Bollinger Band peaks were made, drew my Fibonacci retracement tool. Once an hourly close, that's the, the time frame I like to use, is below the 70% line, that's my trigger to cover. Now I use this for every market that I'm trading. And 60 minute, like I said, is my preferred time frame. So that's this week's Ninja Charting Edge. Hang tight while we get more Ed on the line. All right, what's up, buddy? Hey, thanks for having me on. It was funny, on Twitter the other day, I was noticing a lot of people were talking about when the hair and the no hair get together. It's <laughs> must watch content. <laughs> and now you and I are doing two videos in a month. So uh, it's always great, great to speak with you. And you know, you and I, we've done so many shows together and we've talked about so many things. I mean, we've gotten into uh, mindset, execution, you name it you and I have pretty much talked about it, but something that we've never done as this is develop your edge. Today, we're gonna to talk about your edge. We're just gonna really hone in on what is Morad's edge? Yeah, so uh, I'll try to keep this as short as possible. We could talk about this for a long time, but you know, I, I've been, I've spanned the gamut of, uh, you know, heavy volume, high volume scalping, basically market making in equities to market making in, in futures, uh, you know, trading at a tick level. Uh, and then I moved out of that space as more and more uh, computers took over and, and speed became a, became a difficult thing to, to maintain against computers. So I went to checking out indicators and stuff, but where I landed is uh, in, in what's called the auction, the auction th theory, the auction process. And to me, my edge boils down to, we could talk, talk about the technical side, which is what's common, but my exposure to just backing traders to my own issues over time and having to reinvent myself, and then now dealing with a large number of online independent traders, a lot of times the edge uh, never shows up because the issue, it, it boils down to more fundamental stuff. But the, on the technical side, to answer your question, my edge is understanding how the market operates, how the auction gyrates, what the market's purpose is. The market's constantly seeking balance, seeking value, and it's going to test prices as high as it needs to, to really get sellers involved and it's going to test prices as low as it needs to to find those buyers and then to bring them together it's like ebay except it happens you know in milliseconds where bids and offers are coming in and the market's constantly discovering and and pricing in that information that new information that's coming in be it a stimulus 
uh, being it be it an election, be it another variant of uh, COVID-19, whatever it is, the market's going to put a price on that. And it's very efficient at doing that. My edge is simply following that story. I'm really, really good at following that story. And then you get to the hard right edge. And then at some point, I have to then become a predictor of what's more likely to happen. And that combined with clearly defined risk, uh, a good R factor, meaning a good return per unit of risk, and it's all statistics from there. And with, the, with a solid and strong understanding that I cannot know the future, nobody knows the future, no matter how much you throw money at people, they're not gonna be able to predict the future. And I don't need to know the future. I just need to know that there's a slight edge to buying a pullback because you know what? We've broken in through a, a pretty major high. The market rotated down. It generated very poor volume on the pullback. There wasn't much interest. There was nobody squeezing it back down below that prior resistance. And so my job now is to find a location where I can get long with a very clearly defined risk and then just keep your hands off the mouse and let it play out. So the edge, when you're talking about an edge, most people think like an algorithm or a black box, you know, it's some statistical thing or some indicator thing. Your edge is really, you can make it as technical as you want, but unless your mind is straight and unless your understanding of the risk uh, aspect of trading, and again, trading futures is not suitable for all investors, but as long as you don't understand how risk plays into this, uh, you know, Richard Dennis said in the first Market Wizards, which was a, just a mind blowing book for me because I just, when it came out, I just started, was struggling to learn the trade, said I could take out a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal and lay out the rules for the turtles. You know, this was a big money making edge that he had. He could lay them out in a full page ad on Wall Street, put it out there. And he said, most people will probably lose money trading it. And he's absolutely right. So when we're talking about developing your edge, I am a strong advocate of, yes, having a statistical edge or a technical edge, but you've got to be able to execute it. You have to do the work to track it, to log it, to journal it, to check it, and so on and so forth. So combining all those things is a very difficult, it's a lifelong process. You and I have been doing this for 20 years, now 21st year this year. And it's, I'm still a student. I'm, I still, I'm still kind of haven't figured it out because it's just, uh, as, as you get better at some things, other things kind of change and evolve, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Traders were, were always students of, of this business. And it was interesting hearing you say that your edge is understanding how the auction works, following the story. And then, you know, after all the shows that we've done together, we've talked so much about journaling. You know, you and I, uh, you know how I was into it, then I wasn't, and I'm back to doing more of it, understanding statistics. And we talk about qualifying trades, quantifying your edges. When you have a combination like you have, like you talked about, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a couple of different things, several things that come together, and then that is ultimately your edge. Talk to us about how that actually comes to the point where you actually, like you would qualify a trade or quantify, you know, a, a setup that they, you actually can quantify that combination actually as your edge. Right. That's a great question because a lot of people are like, well, how do you back test all that? You know, yeah. the psychology, you know, you know, I don't need to back test it because Back testing has its value and it's important when it's a purely technical, when you're testing the purely technical side, like um, if the market opens and the first 30 minute bar closes at high, how often does the second bar exceed that by two points or more? Click, 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 click. And then you yeah. can get some statistics on how that works. That's just a small fragment. However, with what I'm talking about, when I'm using volume profiling and how the market is accepting or rejecting prices based, in, based on volume at price, um, it's hard to test that. I'm not really gaining anything by going back 
and checking what it's done for the last 20 years or 10 years or whatever. I'm not saying that that's not a valid way to start, but the real test is to, to quantify it is just to do it, log it. You, you have your execute, you have your prep, you have your execution, which is where all the stuff comes together. Problems, strengths, weaknesses, <laughs> demons, they all come together. That's where the rubber hits the road. And then you can't just walk away from that. What you have to do is log that. Okay, these are the trades that I took. These are the stats that I produced today. These are my performance metrics. And then here's what happened on the first trade. Here's what happened on the second. And with the, with the idea that, okay, I was able to execute my plan and it just didn't have an edge today, or I was able to execute my plan over the last two weeks. I've generated 30 trades or 50 trades and there was no edge. So now my edge is non-existent and that's the process. It's, you know, you're Italian. It's <laughs> like, it's like cooking, right? It's, it's like you go to your grandma and you're like, can you write me a recipe for your best whatever dish? And she's going to be like, it's, it's all in here, you know, and, and she'll adjust things as she goes along. And that's really the process for me. I know that's not an answer that people might like, but I'm an advocate for just writing your plan down. This, uh, those people who are looking to develop your, their edge, most of them don't even bother to write down what they're actually going to do, right? And how they're going to, so you write it down, then you do it, then you check the performance of how you did it versus how you wrote it down. And then you make adjustments, you figure out what errors you executed, and then you come back and you do it again better tomorrow. And do that on a simulated environment or on a backtest environment. Do it on a CME micro product, for example. Keep your risk low, trade a one lot, see how things play out for you. And you can, over time, develop this flow, this alignment with the market. And that's where the edge is. It's being able to understand, here's where we came from. You know, when you talk about the Ultrabon, you and I have talked about the Ultrabon in the past, you're like, uh, you know, they're, they're a little heavy here. I, I, I think it's going to come off and you can almost feel it in your soul, right? It's hard to quantify that, but for somebody testing, take your time, create the plan. And then your job is almost to be like a lab technician where you have an idea. Now go test it, go test it, walk it forward. You need about 50 samples minimum, the more, the better, and then execute it on a simulator. And in general, People have found through a lot of contact with online traders, they generally understand what they're doing and they might have an edge. They can do well in, simul in, in a sim environment, but then they go live and it just goes to down the crapper, right? Uh, and the reason is now you're bringing your psychology, your ability to be aware of your emotional uh, state, your ability to keep a panoramic view on the market versus getting it really narrow because you're afraid of taking a loss. And, things like that. I know that's not a very direct answer to your question, but it's the reality of the, the situation. Yeah, and not every question needs a direct answer, especially when it comes to developing your edge. And Morad's talking a lot about always being a student. And to me, I, I, I live by that. And, and part of the reason I started Develop Your Edge is because I'm constantly developing my edge. You know, 20 plus years into this, I feel like Every day I'm waking up and looking at going, how can I get better? I remember there was a time where I said to myself, if I could just find a way to make money, become a really good trader, I'll be set. And that mindset just was wrong. It was about always finding a way to actually get better at trading. Once I started down that path, I was constantly working and developing my edge, having the, the flexibility to adapt uh, to, to how I've changed, how markets have changed. You can't just develop one single edge and expect that to work forever. We all wish that. That's not reality. Um, and what I want to leave you with today or leave the traders with today is one of my favorite lines actually on this show was when I did uh, my uh, chat with uh, Merritt Black and, I, and we talked about mental edge. And he said, and I thought it was great, he goes, well, just go study with the Dalai Lama for a little bit and come to Trade Futures and see how well you do. And I thought that you know, it was hilarious because I talk a lot about mental edge. And that's because over time, I've developed 
a process, a strategy, and then I've worked super hard on mental edge. You and I have talked about this in podcasts. But for the traders out there listening to this, what is the process? Because you said you're a combination of, of several things. What is the process? Is it find a technical edge first? Is it, uh, as I just made the joke about merit, is it, is it having mental edge first? Like, What would Morad's advice be to the traders out there that want to develop their edge? What would that process be? Well, the answer is all of check all of the above, right? First, you cannot come into a market without something that has some sort of a statistical edge. You can generate that statistical edge by being in the market and and tracking the performance of your trades or your plan, trading it in a simulator while penalizing your exits to compensate for simulator fills, trading it in a micro product uh, to keep your cost and your risk down. Um, whatever it is, you're going to have to come up with a statistical edge. Like you just cannot make money without a statistical edge. You might as well just sit here and flip a coin, right? Um, so that's one. The, the thing is, that's what gets 90% of the attention from yes. people who are coming into the business. And, 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 and it's not sexy to talk about psychology and risk management, but really the, the edge part, you've got to have it. But let's let's say that you have that, okay? And and a lot of a lot more people have an understanding that can yield an edge than they think, right? They they attribute the overall results of their trading performance to no edge. But put them on a simulator with strict rules and strict uh, limits, they do okay in general, in my experience. But you put them live, and it just seems like everything blows up. So that tells you that there's something, there's a disconnect there. So let's just take the technical edge, which gets most of the attention and where the forms are full of indicators and all that stuff. Let's take that and just say you have some sort of a, an edge. To me, understanding the auction, understanding market and volume profiling is a huge edge no matter what market you trade. It could be crypto, it could be Forex, doesn't matter. It all has to auction. Let's set that aside. Now, it boils down to how well are you doing the work? Are you, how, what does it take to trade right, right? To trade right as a professional, you have to do the work. You have to log what's going on, and you have to be very, very clear about what you did versus what you expected to do and what error did you introduce into the equation. And your job now becomes about sniping those errors, getting rid of those errors. People say, God, I knew I needed to get long, but I got short all day long, you know? <laughs> and it's because the, your, the mind, the, your, the trust is not there. And you build trust by tracking something very closely. So journaling, being accountable to your plan. And then the other part is just the baggage that we bring in terms of my inability to accept losses. A loss is a personal injury to my ego. So I cannot have losses. Well, guess what, buddy? You're going to have a lot of losses if that's your mindset. Your goal is not to worry about wins and losses. Your goal is just to line up with the market, define your risk, and take the trade. And then, so the psychology part is the part that I, as a, a former prop shop owner, 80% of the time, I would guess, 80% of the resources, money, and time were invested in just getting people to just do what they're supposed to do, just getting rid of the psychological issues, the ego, the fight, and just becoming centered. And you and I have talked about meditation being just a very powerful way to get into that center and to be emotionally aware. You cannot control your emotions, but you can control your reaction to those exactly. emotions. Exactly. That's a big piece. Huge piece for me. Self-awareness in moments, making the correction in moments. To me, that is one of the defining lines between somebody who's uh, you know, teetering on success because I was somebody who would make the mistake in the moment, go back later, talk about it, and then make that mistake in the moment again and just set myself further back. Once in the moment, I said, you know what? You're stopping here today. You're doing this here today because I went through the pain of making that mistake then I started progressing and getting better. Self-awareness is huge. And as you and I talked about, and I pointed Absolutely. to everybody, I said, meditation helps with that. And to, to me, it's been, well, like I said, one of the greatest things I've ever done. And I learned a lot of that 
from you. And, and as usual, every time we speak, I learn a ton from you. And before I let you go today, Convergent Trading, there's so many traders I have uh, come on this show and send me messages that say that they learned so much from you. A lot of that now is through Convergent. Tell everybody about what, you do, what you're doing there. So Convergent Trading is really, um, the purpose of Convergent Trading is to take the entire process of becoming a professional trader and putting it in a package that supports you through uh, chat. This isn't your standard noisy chat room. Essentially, what we've created and what we'll continue to create is a virtual prop environment where don't mistake us for somebody who's funding traders. Uh, that's, not, that's not on the table right now. But what we're doing is all the important work that, a, that you would get or the benefits you would get being at a virtual, uh, at a prop shop. That is the infrastructure, the, the daily repetition, the accountability, you have accountability partner services, you have an accountability journal, you have market statistics. We, uh, the conversation is very focused. And our intent here is to support the trader towards becoming a career professional trader. Uh, that's what Convergent does. It has a lot of members and there's a lot of variety in there. So it's not like people are in there to trade my way. There are many, many different ways to approach the market. Our goal, just like it is in a prop shop, is to get you in a, in a structure that is really focused about developing you as a trader, uh, whichever direction you decide to go. If you want to go get funded, if you want to trade your own account, or you want to be on a senior, it doesn't matter. We just want you to see and experience and be a part of the structure that a prop trader would go into when they join a prop shop. All right, thank you so much for what you do for traders out there. And thank you so much for joining me again on Develop Your Edge. Thanks for having me on, it's always a pleasure. Hang tight traders, I'll be right back with my final thoughts. Why don't I add futures to my trading strategy? 24 seven access to diverse global markets, like wheat. Can you say growth opportunity? Uh, we should probably harvest that. Final thoughts for today, traders. It's always great to chat with Morad. I learn something every time that we speak. And what I take away from in today's chat with Morad is he's spot on. There is really no direct answer as to what a trader's edge is because we're always students. We're constantly developing our edge. Hence, develop your edge. I remember thinking back on as an early trader, if I could just develop one edge, that that edge would last forever. Ask any trader out there. Once you develop an edge, you're constantly working at refining it. So always be a student, and we're always looking to develop our edge. Big week coming up in the futures markets. CME Group is launching Ethereum Futures on February 8th. For someone like myself and many of you that have been trading cryptos for a while, specifically Ethereum, really excited about this launch at CME Group. Now, if you want to learn more about Ether Futures at CME, I put a link down below in the YouTube channel. And if you're watching at anthonycredelli.com, there's also a link down below in the post. And remember, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below here in YouTube. And if you're enjoying the show, click that subscribe button. You could also contact me on Twitter at Anthony Crudelli. My DMs are open. Or check out Instagram, Anthony C. Crudelli. That's a wrap for today. See you next week.